Okay, the first thing we're gonna start out with is doing an intro on Hillary. Okay. So this is my partner, my wife, and my best friend. We've been married for 23 years and we started the company together. And I know you guys have never seen her on camera, but we've actually built the company together. And I talked Hillary into coming on. She's got stories that I forget about and timelines and all kinds of stuff. So I think you guys are really, really excited. So anyway, what, uh, okay. what, what do they need to know about you? Yeah, it's, uh, we really did start this together when, um, when we were engaged, we went to real estate school together. And that really started it. Yeah. As soon as we met, we just always kind of dreamed and planned. Yeah, that's kind of where it all started is getting our real estate license while we are engaged. Yeah, yeah. So Hillary's been a real estate broker for like 20 years or longer yeah. or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I've been a real estate agent for 23 and then a couple years after that, I got yeah. my broker's license. So real estate broker, Hillary also owns rental properties. We own them together. Some of them she actually owns by herself. Some of them I do. <laughs> um, and so, and she has been managing um, rental properties, and I'm not just talking about one or two, I'm talking about 20 plus for how many years? At least, long probably long 20 time. years, probably yeah. 20 years. Yeah. Well, even longer, because we had the threeplex had before the that. So yeah. it's like over 23 years, yeah. Hillary's been managing properties. We have made a lot of mistakes. Yes. And we've also figured a lot of things out. Yes. And so that's why yes. that's why we wanted to do this. Um, what else do you need to know about you? Um, I also get to stay at home and be a mom with my two boys, and I love that. That's my favorite. Awesome. Why don't we talk about some of your concerns about getting into real estate, rental real estate? Okay. Like thinking back 23 years or whatever the case is, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Or fears you hear other people talking about quite frequently about rental real estate. Um, what are some of those common fears or things that you hear well, first off, let's talk with you. Like, what, what, if you can think back, what type of fears or what types of things did were you worried about when we started getting started? Yeah. Um, one of the fears is when we bought our first duplex, just doing repairs on it, because mm -hmm. I had never even painted anything yeah. before. I just hadn't done any handiwork. Um, and so that was a little overwhelming. Um, and then, I mean, I was 19, and now I have a mortgage. Um, but we did it together, and so that felt exciting too, and mm -hmm. safe, and like, it'll be fine, you know? So, but those were probably the biggest things that, you know, just like all of a sudden, like, this is a big deal. Well, I remember going to the closing table on buying that duplex, and they had like, Pages yes. and pages and pages. Uh -huh. um, and I remember my dad was there and I started reading <laughs> every page. Oh, I remember And I keep that. turning it over and he's and like, are you going to read every page? And I'm like, well, I was planning on it. I got to sign it. <laughs> he's like, this is how it works. You, you're you pay it, you keep it, you don't, they take it. It's yeah. that simple. And if you don't sign it, you don't get it. <laughs> you don't sign it, you don't get it. That's the end of that. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, re I remember that and jumping into that duplex and doing things. Um, what do you think, or what do you hear people talk about when it's like they're just scared of getting into rental real mm -hmm. estate? What are some yeah. of the big things that are like, oh, I wish I could do that, but. Yeah, yeah. Like if they ask me, oh, you manage some rental properties. Um, I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh my gosh, that just sounds like a nightmare. Mm -hmm. That just sounds, yeah. Like just, I've they've heard all these horror stories of people trashing the place, burning it up. Yeah. Um, we've just, had a fire. We had a And we, we had have had all those. We've had people trash yeah. it and we've, we've had, had all, all kinds of stuff. Um, but we also had the education all through it so we could fine tune it to where managing it is fun and it's great and it's, it's worth it. It's relatively easy. It relatively is. easy. Yes. Yes. Um, there still is work involved, yes. with it, but it's relatively easy. Look, let's the talk about work is getting it all together and the processes all together. And if you follow them, then it's really not that hard. And that's what we're giving you guys is, is the process, the way to do that. So you can learn from our mistakes and you don't have to spend, I don't know, 30,000. How much did we spend? Remember the property that, um, 
the they were doing meth. <laughs> they were doing meth in or something. On fifty six hundred. Yeah, West. yeah, yeah. How much did we yeah. spend on that? Do you think? When we first bought it, um, we we rehabbed it a little bit, remodeled it. We did carpet and paint, oh, and we yeah, spent just, ten thousand. Okay. And then after um, they moved out, some really bad tenants moved out. Meth lab. I can't remember, but my guess would be thirty to forty thousand. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. Thirty to forty thousand is probably yeah. what we spent on that. Yeah. Um, and you'll notice the. Um, we'll talk about this in some other times, but the difference is who you put in as a tenant. That really is like the number, yeah. number, number one thing is right. who you put in as a tenant. Right. Wouldn't you say like? Absolutely. Is there anything that's more important? You could no. even you could even pay too much for the property. Mm-hmm. And put in, but put in the right tenant. Yeah. And twenty years later, it would yeah. still be worth it. Well, fifty six hundred West, it would have been better for it to sit vacant for years. Yeah, think of that. Because what was our rent? Um, thousand like bucks or something. Okay, or something. let's just call yeah. it a thousand. So if they did thirty thousand dollars worth of damage, it would have been better for us to have it sit for two and a half two years, and a half years yeah. than put the wrong person in. Yeah. Yeah. Puts it in perspective. So, but when you first start out, in your mind, having a vacant seat is so stressful and yeah. and you just feel like and even now I hate a property sitting just thinking like every day I'm losing a couple of dollars yeah. but I've learned that let it sit get the right tenant because they could be the, in there for a long long time great tenant you know yeah. you'll make money you'll you'll make money in the long term for sure um, yeah, and I think that's one of the things people make a lot of mistakes with is they get scared. They have this loan they've got to pay on the house, another mm -hmm. house that they don't mm -hmm. live in, and they try and justify why somebody would be a good tenant rather than screening them for a bad because yes. they're worried about the pain of having yeah. to make those payments. And so I think fear drives fear drives a lot of people. Yeah. But yeah. Um, if you follow, and maybe just being lazy. Yeah, that may be too. You know, and also um, laziness. Laziness, not really digging through the applications, mm. and also investigating, investigating, invest. Yeah. So yeah, give some examples. I, of that. I love so. doing the application process because it's yeah. like an investigation. Like I assume everyone is lying. Absolutely. And most of them are. <laughs> but most people don't do that. So no, and so even when I call a landlord, um, that they've given me the information. That's not how I start off like, oh, how how did the Williamses um, treat your place and how are they good tenants? It's like, I'm calling about your place for rent and then I wait for their response. And sometimes it's like, what are you talking about? I don't even I don't have, have a place, place for, for rent. rent. And I'm like, oh, well, so-and-so said that they rented from you. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I oh, do yeah, have yeah, a yeah. place for rent. Well, you just said you didn't, you know? And then it's yeah. kind of like, okay. Um, also, and we're going to get into all this stuff in detail as time goes on here, but um, are there good tenants out there? Yes. Amazing. Really great people. Great And um, would you say they're hard to find? Um, kind of a loaded question, I guess. I know, because you will find them no matter what, but you might have to go through 10 applications. Yeah. But they're there. They're there. You they're will there. find them. There yeah. are great tenants out there. Yeah. Great tenants. We're talking great tenants. We're not talking just, okay, we're talking yeah, great tenants. Yeah, tenants that leave your property in better condition. Bingo. Then, then when they got it. Yeah. And they do that stuff on their dime. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're making improvements to our properties with their money. I just got a text a couple days ago with a tenant showing me that they rebuilt the backyard fence and she wanted to see. Want to show wanted us. Wanted to show us and, and tell me about it. And it's. I didn't even know they were doing it. Yeah. She said that, you know, that earthquake that happened like during COVID. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple she years said ago. that it, um, it fell down. <laughs> we had no idea. No. Yeah. I and didn't call like, us. And like, there's was, a reason why they didn't it call us. It took us three years, but look at it. And I'm like, great job. Great job. That's awesome. Um, what? One of the fears I think a lot of people have with real estate um, buying rental properties is they can't afford it. Yeah, they're like, how am I gonna get a loan? So we were 19, 20, whatever the case is. Um, I think people use, I can't afford it as more of an excuse than they really look into it, yeah. right? Because yeah. one, one of the things that Taylor and I did is we did 80-20 loans, because mm -hmm. we didn't have the money. <laughs> we had your parents co-sign. On the first one, yeah. On the first one. And, and after that, we were able to get our own, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we got 80-20 loans. Mm -hmm. 
which basically means we got a loan. A um, first and second mortgage. Yeah, so let's say that we're, let's say we're buying the house for $100,000. We got one lender to give us 80,000, another lender gave us 20,000, and we came up with zero. Um, these were subprime loans, um, and they're starting to come back, believe it or not. Yeah, I heard that. But we always had to have um, some, some money reserve. because the properties we were buying needed work. Oh, yeah. Always. Great point. Work. Yeah, yeah. And I remember We'd some of put... that went on a credit card once. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we'd have to have some money to put into to the property to do all this. Um, the other thing that you can do right now is um, they'll do loans based upon the cash flow. So if you're going to do like a VRBO and you're going to have really good cash flow, they'll actually lend based upon the cash flow projections, not based upon anything else. That makes sense. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there. I would say um, for somebody that's like, I can't afford it or I don't have the money, I think you're lacking creativity. Well, and I would I would say for the, for the younger crowd, um, most people just don't think about buying yeah. a house or rental property when they're 18. Yeah. That seems, they think that's way down the road. Yeah. And it's like, no, you you actually do it now because time is your friend right now. Yep. And that's when you're young and that's when you have more energy and you can take on more risk. That's when you do it. And so... I think most people, I think my family and I think a lot of friends were shocked when we were buying a duplex. I mean, Ryan was 21 and I was almost 19. Yeah. Yeah, I was almost 19. Well, then let's look here. I've got the um, economic research. This has all the information for the median half price ranges in the United States, mm -hmm. the entire United States. Okay. So let's come down here. When we bought our first property in, in 2000. 2000, okay. Um, the average median price in the United States in mm -hmm. 2000 was $163,000. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. And look right now. So you come up here and the property, it, it, it's dipped a little bit, but it's $479,000 now. Yeah. So the property has more than doubled 2.5 times. And we bought properties at that time. Mm -hmm. And what have we done to those properties to make the values go up? Nothing. Very little. Yeah, very little. Well, what's funny is um, this number, I remember my parents thinking, I cannot believe you're paying that much for it. It's true. And so here, us parents are saying, I can't, can't believe, believe you're paying, paying that, that much. much for it. It doesn't really matter. It's all relative. And so, um, so a lot of, a lot of people are like, I can't afford it. Yeah. I can't afford it. It's too yeah. expensive. It's like, well, guess what? I mean, my parents bought their first home for 50,000. So the 163 was super Crazy. expensive to them, you know, but it's like, you just make it work. You just make it work. Yeah. And it's, it's always hard. The first couple. Well, it's probably the first 10 years. It's really hard. Well, I think if you had a good management system, um, it would make it a lot easier because yeah. we had to we learn a lot of stuff we and we lost a lot of money. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars we lost through making mistakes. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I would you, how much would you guess? A half a million? I don't know. No. Okay. Well, what do you think? Like no, $50,000? Like <laughs> $50,000 there, $30,000 there, yeah. $100,000 on Kalimas Creek. Yeah, but that was like a personal thing. But still, it was an investment. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, gosh. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. What, what would you guess? 20000 adds up. What would you guess? Um. Because I can think of three examples. I'd say like 200000 Well, Kalimas was a hundred. Yeah. Um, 5,600 was. Now, some of it we covered when we sold it. Yep. You know, so it wasn't like, it was just out, of, out of pocket. So I guess maybe yeah. that's, maybe, maybe that. It was a loss at the time, but not a loss for long term. Yeah. I think it's maybe a way to say. Yeah. Um, if we jump over here to the graph, this is one of the things I like people to really think about. Um, 2007, mm -hmm. the height of the real estate, mm -hmm. highest of all time, right? Mm -hmm. Right before the crash. The median price was two hundred fifty-seven thousand. Mm -hmm. What's the median price now? Yeah. And people in two thousand and seven were saying real estate's never going to go up. Like, yeah. like we have reached the ceiling; it's never going to happen. Yeah. And we did. And have, we thought that too. Oh, absolutely. We totally thought that. We were scared. Yeah, we were scared. Okay, this is what's crazy. So, if you didn't go through two thousand and eight, well, what was two thousand eight like? There's a lot of people that weren't in real estate or maybe not old enough to really realize it. 
When 2008 hit, what was it like? It was, cause now you know what happened. So I'm trying to like yep. kind of put myself in that position. Well, on one side of it, we were doing short sales. Mm -hmm. So our business did really well. Tell, tell them what short sales are. A lot so of people short sales, so in 2008, people were not able to pay um, their mortgage payments. And instead of just waiting to get foreclosed on, they would call us and we would work with the bank and say, hey, um, kind of negotiate a price and say, okay, we can pay, let's say they, they owed 100,000 on it. Well, we can get you 90,000 and we can pay you off in three days, you know, instead of them having to go through the foreclosure process and then have to resell it and all that stuff. So we sold it to the bank as like, this is, this is good for you too. And it was, it's a win -win. you know, it's a win-win. And so, um, so now we're, we're um, finding people that are in a couple of months behind in distress in distress and then and then we do that so um, so as like an agent um, selling the properties that went up and that was yeah. great that we took advantage of that yeah. time in the market yeah so that kind of kept us afloat you yeah. know that was kind of like the, but the job I really um, it sounds weird but we we kind of thought the world was ending you know what I mean? Because yeah. it was like values, values were 257,000. Well, here there were 257,000, okay? Mm -hmm. And and we saw values go down and we had opportunities to buy. Mm -hmm. We we're like, oh, it's way too expensive. It's, and we passed on yeah. pretty much everything. Yeah. So yeah. let's say, so if you see those come down, so the dip. And we also had um, properties that we were rehabbing during that time. And even a little after, like even in 2010, 2011, we, we started to, uh, we were buying and flipping houses, um, but it still had not settled down yet no. and it dipped. And, and I remember like, I, there was like two or three properties in like kind of downtown Salt Lake. And I remember it just being on the market for too long and we thought we, we bought as a good deal, but the market really was, it, it hadn't not leveled out yet. And so, um, so yeah, I, I went in there trying to think of anything I can do to help sell it without lowering the price too much. And, and that's when I went to target <laughs> and I had three properties and I went to target with Taggart, my little baby. He yeah, was like, was he? he was like one. Yeah. Yeah. And I start loading up the carts and I walk out with like five carts of pillows and bedding and towels and rugs and tables. And I go. That we put on a credit card. Yeah. <laughs> More than yeah. likely. <laughs> well, to get points. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so then I went and staged them. And that's kind of the first time I'd ever thought about like staging. Yeah. That was kind of before. A lot of people were using like companies. Yeah, there weren't to really stage. there weren't companies out there. Yeah, it wasn't that wasn't really a thing. And so I I bought blow up mattresses. Yep. And then I put the bedding over it. Well, what we did we had our crates that we put all our stuff in, mm -hmm. and then we'd get the crates out and we put the blow up mattress yeah. on top of it. Yeah. And then we put the um, yeah. we put the comforter on there and put a couple yeah. pills. Yeah. So I remember just like putting Taggart down on the floor to play, and I'm just like setting it all up, you know. Um, and that did help. That made a big difference, you yeah. know, and, and we sold them and we might've made a little bit of money. Yeah. I don't remember exactly. If it was, it was just yeah. a few thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, we were, we are still buying, we are still definitely in the market. Um, but it was, it was still riskier. Yeah. Well, in this graph that we're looking at right now, this is from 1963 to 2023. Um, so this shows along, but. There's one thing you'll see in common in this graph. It is going up. Yeah. Like it's going up. Like there is just, it's going up. So values got to $208,000. Now, every area is different. This is median for the entire United States, right? And some were worse and some were better and some were whatever. Mm -hmm. But for the United States, we went from 257 down to 208. What type of a, what are we talking about? Um, roughly 50,000, we'll just call it 49,000 mm -hmm. is actually mm -hmm. what it is. And so 49,000 divided by 257 is what? 49 divided by 25, whoops, 257. Um, it went down 19%. You know? What surprised me is, do you remember that rental income went down? 
rental prices went down as well. So not just the Only values. for a minute though. I went and looked back at that. I'll show you some of the graphs. It went down for just a minute and then it went up because everybody was moving down. Huh. Because I, I remember having to it, reduce our rent. It was just for a few like, months. Uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I looked at it. I think it was just for a few months when everybody was freaking I, out and panicking. I figured like it was like a year or two. Yeah. So on the graph, but that's, rental prices actually go up. Hmm. It has a little. That's then, very interesting. Yeah. Because I remember lowering them and I remember saying, we're only cash flowing a hundred to two hundred dollars. Yeah. And now I have zero cash flow. Oh yeah. And why am I managing these properties? And so it start. I started to kind of panic, and I remember talking to you like, when the market corrects, whenever it does, in a couple of years or whenever, let's sell some of these properties. Yeah. You know, because I was not seeing the trend going up. The for big us. Pri the big picture. Yeah. Uh, do you wish? So did we sell some? We did. Um, we did. Do you wish we would have? not sold them or are you happy we did? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. Um, I wish I hadn't sold them. How come? Because, um, every year I raise rents now and I add several thousand dollars a month to my income. Um, and I never saw that the first 10 years. So we bought rentals in 2000, 2010 were lowering and we're just getting by, like $100 a month. Or nothing. Or just yeah, I mean, even. just barely, you know. So then all of a sudden, I'm lowering rents, and I'm kind of like, this sucks. You know, everything's tight. So then when you do have a problem, it's, like, stressful. Yeah. Um, and so, and you have it sitting vacant, so then it becomes stressful, too. And you're like, we don't even have equity in this home now. So... To me, it made sense to be like, okay, well, we don't even have equity in this property anymore. And also, I put a bad tenant in there, my mistake. I put a bad tenant in there, well, we and now I'm 20,000 higher than I wanted to be, so it just makes sense to sell it um, and and be done with it. Yeah. And I, if I would have just held on to it just a year or two more, I would have I seen the light, and I would have seen it trend up. And... Yeah, we have a lot more income. <laughs> so yeah, I totally regret it. Um, I was just looking. Let me. Yeah. But I, I just. They you just, get scared. I think that fear is probably the thing that stops people the most. Yeah, you get scared. Um, I'm trying to find. I have a great graph. And I mean, we were seeing we were seeing other investors losing their homes. Yeah. Builders losing their homes. Absolutely, we lots of them. We were selling builders homes and investors and like beautiful houses beautiful houses that we were like oh my yeah gosh, i wish really. we could buy them you know and so and um, we bought one of them and we yeah we did we bought one <laughs> that's right we bought a builder's home um yeah that is that's i mean that's sad but yeah we and and we can go into that our strategy and, yeah. and how we were able to keep properties and all that stuff but i never really heard like Having rentals and managing rentals is a great thing. Mm. No one really talks about the positive things about it. And so I'm like, yeah, I get what they're saying. This sucks. This sucks. And I wish somebody would have said, do not ever sell real estate. Yeah. That's all Pretty much. Do not ever sell it. Ever. And so that would have made a big difference for us. Well, and I've got a graph here. You can see the average rent in 1940 was 27,000, and in 2021 it was 1,191. Wait, $27? $27 a month in 1940. Okay. Wow. And now? So if you look, what's, says, what's actually interesting is the trajectory of this graph for rentals mm -hmm. is higher and steeper than, than the values. Yeah. Um, we can go back over to this values one. Oh, but, you're right. But what I think is really interesting about that is... Um, this going higher and steeper, the, the difference between what happened in those years, the rents went up higher proportionally than the values did. And if you're a cash flow investor and you're looking for cash flow, that's all that matters. It keeps going up. Oh, that's true. Pretty crazy, huh? That's true. So let me just tell you the average rent in 2021, or let's just do 2010. 
let's start with 2010. Sorry, I'm doing this wrong. Okay, it was $810. And in 2020, let's just go 10 in, years. in Utah or? Nationally. In, okay. Yeah, this is median monthly rents nationally. Okay. Okay. Um, and so you're looking at 2020 was 1071. Mm -hmm. So we went up, I don't About know. $200. More than, yeah, yeah. So, so like it's 20%. like 810, 1071 minus 810, $261. Yeah. And so if I divide that by the 810, rents went up 32.2% increase in 10 years. Mm -hmm. That's huge. That's crazy. And what did we do for the rental prices to go up? Nothing. Yeah. Um, Just held on to it. So looking at this graph, do you think rental prices will go down? Well, as of 1960, no. <laughs> what about as of 2000? I know, or 2010. Or 2010. Or so yeah. I think I think the real answer is never. Well, they're going to go down, and they're going to go up, and they're going to go a down. Little bit. Yeah, I mean, not, it's going to, but it's not going to be as, not home values though. Home values are a little bit more. Yeah, like this. I think so. Rents and are rents probably are more stable. Like little, yeah, little low, yeah, fifty little bucks, hundred bucks, that type of stuff. Yeah. But 20 years from now. Do you think that rents for median price is going to be more than a thousand bucks? Twenty years from now. Yeah. No question. Okay, I was just thinking about like all of our cash flow in twenty years. Boom! <laughs> like how much I'd be raising rents? You know, I'd be like, oh, this is like, I actually didn't think about the next twenty years, and I'm like, we could. Hey, hey. We by could, the way, this was only ten years. We could double almost our income. In 20 years, mm -hmm. um, I think we'll, well, it went up 30% in yeah. 10 years. Yeah. So like 64%. Yeah. So I don't know if it'll quite double and it might be a little less, but I bet we go up 20, I bet we go up 50%. So if you had $10,000. That'd be kind of exciting. That would be exciting. You'd have $10,000 worth of cash flow. You yeah. basically got another 5,000 over that 20 years because of rent increases. Now you got $15,000 worth of cash yeah. flow. Yeah. Yeah. Holy crap. But I think people get scared. I think it, um, it really comes down to staying power. Like, you've got to be able to hang on. And um, sacrifice. And sacrifice, yeah. Like, when our friends and siblings were buying brand new houses, mm -hmm. uh, there's a few times we were jealous. For sure. I was like, wait, you didn't have to do anything. You didn't yeah. have to paint, tear out the carpet, get rid of the cat smell. Like, yeah. You know? Um, you have a brand new car. Yeah, yeah. That's really nice. Yeah, I mean... Everything we lived on, lived in, was because it was going to be a rental or we we're eventually going to flip it. And so it was always in very bad condition. Of course. And, we're and buying and, out and a people deal. People were just like, oh, good luck with that house, you know? And so it it is a sacrifice right now. So yeah, it, it way worth it. Now that I'm seeing like all the fun things we get to go do and the experiences we get and the traveling and not having to worry about money. Like that is, I don't kind of get teary eyed. That is such a blessing to be able to like, not have to worry about money. Yeah. You know, it's not even about like the nice car and stuff. It's the, it's the stress release of it. It's you sleeping at night. It's not fighting about money. It's, um, it's being able to give and help others and um, and pass that along. So, yeah. but I would rather worry about the money and worry about those things earlier on than I would do it when I'm 80 yeah. years old, when I'm yeah. 70 years old. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, let's just because we're kind of on this subject a little bit. Um, we talked a little bit about um, buying a house, like house hacking. Let's call it. Okay. So right now. Um, if you buy a house and you live it two out of five years, okay, you're able to get some of that money tax free. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think right now it's $250,000 for a person, or I think it's a half a million dollars for a couple that could change whatever the case is. But mm -hmm. basically what that means is if you bought that house for $250,000, let's say, mm -hmm. you know, and let's say you put $50,000 into fixing it up. And so you're in the house, 300,000. That house, after real estate agent fees, whatever the case is, if you sold it three years later and you sold it for three for six hundred thousand, 
okay? That 300,000 you pay zero taxes on. This is like one of the biggest legal, legitimate tax loops that is crazy Yeah. that people just yeah. don't know about. That's true. They just don't know about. Yeah. And this is not a 1031 exchange. Yeah. 1031 exchange, whole other thing, yeah. topic for another day. But this is basically saying you can buy it, you can live it for two years, and you can sell it. You could buy it, you could rent it mm -hmm. for three years, you just mm -hmm. have to sell in that fifth year. You got, you got to live it at two out of the five years of current, the currently and check with your CPA account and all that stuff. But um, that's something people really don't understand. And I don't think you and I understood that as well. Yeah, I think we would have moved more. We would have moved more. Because on Meadowmore, we stayed there for what, six, yeah. seven, eight years? Yeah, we should have moved. We should have been moving every two years. Yeah, and, it, and it's hard because financially we should have moved every two years. Yes. It's also hard because it's like, oh, we like this neighborhood, we like the people, we're, you yeah. know, that type of stuff. So there's a lifestyle aspect to that. Yeah, you got to take was, all that into But if it was purely financial, we should have moved every two years. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, and, and kept maybe some of them. Can you imagine if we kept Meadowmore? Oh my goodness. Yeah, but we had to sell metal more so we could get into our other one, another house, and that got us to another place. So you know, there's it's a true. there's a lot that's involved with that. It's true. We um, needed the money. Do you want to? Let's talk about. We talked a little bit about the builders in 2008 and how crazy it was. Um, a couple of things come to mind for me. Um, one of the things that I noticed people doing prior to 2008. Let's grab our graph here. You know, in these years, is I saw people going up and up and up and up in the investing price ranges. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our average deal was what, $150,000, would you say? By then, um, it was like 200. 200, okay. Think, yeah. So we were doing like deals that are 200,000. Yeah. Well, I saw guys doing deals that were a million dollars. Or 500. Or 500,000, like yeah. And it's yeah. like, well, man, you're gonna make 20 grand on this, I'm gonna make $100,000 on this. Like, you're stupid, it's gonna take the same amount of time mm -hmm. to do this house mm -hmm. as it is to do this house. Yep, yep. And we refused to, why? Well, those investors lost everything. Everything. Everything, those are the builders, they're just highly leveraged, and so when the market went down, it went down way faster for them than us because yeah. at some point it stops moving. Yeah. It bottoms out, mm -hmm. you know? And so, cause yeah, we would look at these and we're like, I cannot believe you're going to make that much money on them. Yeah. You know, but like we got to keep all of our rental properties. We got to keep our personal home. Um, it was still hard. So that was our strategy. Yeah. We yeah, still, still lost hard. money. We still lost money in yeah. 2008, nine, 10. I I think what most people don't understand is everybody moves down when the market changes, right? Mm -hmm. So if this is a million dollar house is going to probably lose 50% of value and go down to 500,000, where a $200,000 house might go down to 170,000. This one's losing 50% and this one's losing 15%. So the, the higher price the house is, the more volatile that is in a recessionary market right. because what happens is the guy that has the million dollar house buys or rents a house that's a half a million and the guy that has a half a million goes yeah. and buys or rents Well, there's just 200. less people that can afford a million dollar sure. house in, in a slower economy. Yeah, for sure. And everybody moves down and the people that can't afford the $200,000 house move in with their family. Mm -hmm. Everybody moves down, Yeah, um, which is yeah. one of the things that we noticed and that helped. Um, it helped us with our strategy of what types of houses to buy. Yeah. What we, what we yeah. should actually buy, be buying. Yeah. But we did not get into this trap of, oh, let's go up and up and up because we saw, we didn't know this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. But after we saw it, we we're like, holy cow, like everybody's bankrupt and out of business and we're still here. Why? Yeah. And so one of the rules that we've put together is we don't invest over the FHA limit um, for our area. Mm -hmm. We just don't. So my, I want to be at the median price if I'm doing any investments on anything. I want to be at the median price or under the FHA for single family. You know, I was just thinking the newest example, our average price range of lending and buying homes went up, mm -hmm. but like last year when the market, I don't, I don't know if you'd call it crash, but I Oh, mean, we can show you. It went it down. It crashed. Yeah. yeah, it went down. Um, we, we had a lot of hard money loans out. Um, we've got two we're still selling. But we will make money on all of them. Yeah. And I had clients that I sold their house for them, and they made like a hundred thousand less. 
and they just bought it a year ago. Yeah. You know, and so again, it's it's that strategy of yeah, prices have gone up, but that doesn't mean we're even going to invest in a million dollar home. No way. Like, what's the highest price we did? Six fifty. Half a million. Maybe half a million. Yeah, I guess the retail price is more like six hundred. Yeah, well, we invested. The most yeah. we ever, oh yeah, we didn't invest that much. Yeah, we did. We invested like four hundred. Yeah, at the most. That might so we been. always stayed under that. Exactly. Chair. Yeah, the guys that have invested more. Yeah. They're they're yeah. hurting. And one of them, we we kept as a rental, um, and it's been a great. Rental. It was easy to rent. They did a great uh, job remodeling it, so it was nice to to rent it out. And but if it had been a million dollar home. There's no way trouble. we would keep it as a rental. Yeah, you couldn't. That doesn't make well, sense. And, and when we do our loans, we say, hey, would we want to keep this property as a rental property? Mm -hmm. yeah. If it's something we wouldn't consider as yeah. a rental property, we really don't want to do a loan on it. Yeah. And we got a little pride yeah. to aggressive on Ramona. Yeah. Um, I don't think we want to keep that as a rental. But like our same strategy has worked with these two market corrections. It has. Mm -hmm. It absolutely has. And it's been be under the FHA price range. It's yeah. really what it is. Yeah. Um, if you and look, single family. Single family under the FHA price range. And we'll talk why single family at some point. So if you look, you can just Google FHA price range for whatever county you're in. Um, you can look here like in Austin. And you want to look at the one unit. So in Austin, Texas, the FHA loan limit is $472,000. Mm -hmm. So I would never resell a property for more than four hundred seventy thousand mm -hmm. dollars, so I've got to be investing in that for quite a bit less because I got to make money. I got to do all that type of stuff. Even for rental properties or anything else, I want to be under that. Mm -hmm. And and why is that? What what is FHA? Why is this FHA thing so important? Oh, you're asking me. Sure, yeah. Um, because this is this is where you can get really good financing on. Do they still do zero down financing though? FHA. Uh, I think it's three percent now. Three percent. So that's but still better than five, ten percent. Twenty. There's just more options. You can get better rates, um, less down payment, and so um, so there's always going to be more people um, in that price range because of the FHA. They're they're going to. Their payments are lower. Yeah. Well, FHA is actually the Federal Housing Administration, right? So it's government subsidized. And the idea is the country's better if we have people that own houses and take care of it and that type mm -hmm. of stuff. So the banks actually are incentivized to do the FHA loans. Yeah. Um, so it's made to be as favorable as possible mm -hmm. for anyone to get into a house. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably your easiest loan to get. Yeah. Because it's like, how can we do it? Um, yep. I'm just going to look here. Your per easiest, yeah. Percentage of... Where otherwise you go into jumbo loans and one, not all lenders even do jumbo loans and you've got to do way more down... Um, Qualifying is harder, so all those things make a big difference. Yeah. Um, so uh, standard of the FHA price range for your area, and we're not saying buy it at the FHA price range. We're saying you want your resale price and all that type of stuff to be below the FHA price range, which yeah. means you've got to be buying it well below that. Well below and that. if you do that from the market corrections and things that are happening, we've had great success with that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's jump over here. So Hillary was talking about a little bit of a market correction that we've just recently gone through. So I'm just jumping over to our graph. Um, in 2022, the height was 479,000. Again, this is the median for the entire country. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you, you can look at your specific area if you yeah. want to do that and get a feel for it. Yeah. I'm just trying to get ours generalities. Ours probably changed. Yeah, ours might have been more or, or whatever, more. Um, and now we're at 416,000. Okay, is what it's at right now. And then this is a little bit old. Um, so if we take 416, what do we got? 416. Minus 479. So we're down 63,000, which if we divide that by the 479, we're down 13%. Yeah. And that's that's um, a lot of time. That's your profit right there plus some. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes you just try to make 10% profit. So oh, that's yeah. It's like. Yeah, your profit's all gone and then a little bit that more. That just changed in months. Well, it's interesting because when we looked at 2008, I think it went down 18%. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're experiencing something kind of similar to that. Yeah. Not quite as bad, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, you'll see. So, And we're not as scared. We're not at as all. scared. No. At Why? all. Why? We just bought a rental property. Bought another rental property. Yeah. So we see the light. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, success, seeing the success makes it. Yeah. Breeds confidence. Yeah.